welcome to the session guys uh, this is prithvi from supervisorlearning.com and uh, i hope you can hear me as well as see me so today's agenda will be introducing data science and ai and how you can leverage on it and also how to make a successful career transition right and uh, at the end of the discussion i will introduce you uh, our end to end data science course as well which will help you right so in case you have a question in the session you can always uh, ping in the chat or unmute yourself and speak up right i'll we'll have a question answering session at the end as well so let me begin uh, by sharing few slides i hope you can see the screen right so so this is the today's session agenda so before beginning the session uh, i'd like to ask you guys uh, what do you would like to expect from the session the session will last 45 minutes so i'm just curious uh, to know uh, what are your expectation from the session or uh, anything you want me to address from the session hi prithvi harin here hello hi. everyone yeah hi uh, so my expectation is uh, to understand each step like whatever is there in the end to end data science the kind of courses which you will be teaching and hi. at the same time the career opportunities and the use cases probably an application of if you can give with an example so right. that i can understand where it will be useful i know uh, there can be many use cases but Right. one would be helpful that's right. what i expect right thank you arin yeah we will cover most of them uh, in case if my miss out something you i'll take it up at the end also anyone else right so i will uh, briefly share you the agenda today so it will be somewhere like uh, i'll introduce the data science first of all the world and i'll introduce myself as well uh, we'll talk about how a uh, use case works uh, what are the applications uh, the day to day work uh, a data scientist does right and finally i'll also talk about how to transition into data science and uh, all the steps introduced to be introduced in end to end data science course so this will be the flow today uh, i hope uh, So this is a brief about me. So I'm a gold medalist from an IIT Varangal for publishing research papers. I am lucky enough to get into this field way back when I am in graduation itself. So of course, in those days, the boom was not so much, and people used to call it with different names uh, rather than data science and machine learning. So I started up right after my college. I worked for some time in electrical domain, especially. Uh, electrical utilities uh, one of the areas uh, where you still apply prediction models uh, and you have been applying it since a while and then uh, i had my own blog called the positive india i explored journalism part time and uh, for last 5 years since 2016 i've been exploring my passion for uh, data science and optimization so i built a recommendation engine i've worked for a product company in bangalore uh where i worked on 30 million data set of walmart and then i worked in hyderabad at perceptive analytics one of the leading startups in uh, data science and ai domain uh and then i started supervisorlearning.com because i love to educate people and mentor them in career transition so what i believe is like uh, if this field of uh, ai and data science have to be leveraged very well by the businesses and the community so we need uh, a lot of people who are well educated and well trained in this particular field so i felt that's the first step and that's the need of the hour that's the reason i got into the education side of the data science and ml domain so I worked with a lot of companies i designed the top 5 curriculums in india so From twenty hour curriculum to thousand hour curriculum, so, so 
and then at supervised learning i also designed some uh, in depth courses like 100 hours nlp and 100 hours machine learning and all so that's a brief about myself probably you might have uh, noticed it on my linkedin we have interacted in the past also right till get to know more uh, in about it so uh, probably you might have heard a lot of buzzwords about this data science ai machine learning right deep learning nlp computer vision a lot of such courses are available uh, not courses have been terms and uh, this become jargon and uh, you get confused a lot but overall uh, there is one common term you can hear about it's uh, data science or uh, the data world so this is a most common word i would uh, put every of the entire uh, data related spectrum into data science but what runs this is like data based decision making right uh, 10 years ago we never took decisions based on data but the businesses increasingly are taking decisions based on data not only decision it is driving the business as uh, either profit either strategy either new incent incentives uh, new businesses ideas new verticals right the data is driving it so that is the real reason a lot of uh, growth in the market is happening because we have built applications we have uh, invented internet then internet startup starting to come and then uh, we have uh, websites coming up then we have mobile related innovation after mobile and then we have revolutionized the data consumption right so if you look at the evolution of technologies from 1990s these are the major things which happened but somewhere uh, around uh, the time internet started to appear we started uh, uh gathering creating consuming a lot of data now businesses are leveraging on it so a simple use case i can talk about it uh, uh, as hurricane francis which hit florida it's a way back in 2010 uh, and walmart wanted to mine data uh, so that they can make more sales and uh, have better customer engagement the reason is whenever hurricanes hit uh, right uh, the purchase patterns tend to change uh, just like when covid hit uh, our purchase patterns also started to change our push towards healthier diets uh, or our push towards exercise at home right every time there is something like that uh, we change our habits consumption habits so walmart was curious to mine uh, curious to know what happened so they understood packaged water was selling too much uh, but that is a pretty obvious prediction because in us when there are hurricanes uh, the piped water will stop or uh, there will be issues with piped water so people wanted to get packaged water but they observed something called as strawberry pop tarts uh, which an indian equivalent of bujia or peanuts was selling seven times the usual rate right so pop tarts look something like this uh, i've never eaten it i never saw them in india as well but people were curious why strawberry pop tarts were selling so much so any guesses anyone uh, why they were selling so much on a rainy day any guesses so one favorite reason is like uh, this goes well with beer i mean uh, uh, when it's a winter day people wanted to consume more beer alcohol and pop tarts is something which sells uh, or which goes very well with uh, beer so uh, people stacked beer people stacked water but uh, i mean walmart stacked water they didn't expect strawberry pop tarts to sell so much but something interesting happened because the pop tarts were going out of stock people started uh, not consuming beer i mean not buying beer so 
what does this is a pure business problem but what does a data science has to come to do here so whenever you wanted to mine data first of all you need to have this data at multiple location multiple places and all the computer science or the it department or the it skills part of you where you learn sql querying or where you uh, do the no sql part or mongo db something so you should be able to query or get the relevant data because the sales data for a particular store in walmart for a particular duration of last 5 days is a specific query and most likely it is not a single query sitting on a single database now uh, the domain or business knowledge part of this is uh, see uh, whenever when a hurricane hits people might be buying a lot of things so they might be buying uh, uh, water they might be buying beer they might be buying pop tarts uh, right how do you relate to it and what is the business use case here so that is the business aspect of it more of a business analyst thinks about it because he wants to make an opportunity out of it not in a bad way but in a good way like because he wants see people come to a store they don't have time to shop store by store pick items and in general uh, in us when they shop they go to one place they get it all kind right unlike in indian customer where we pick items from different locations so customer satisfaction is also important they don't want a dissatisfied customer this all aspect or process is thought by the domain guys or the business guys and finally the math and stats guys is like there might be 2000 items uh, which are selling faster so how to get all this 2000 items list and out of this 2000 items for a, let's say item 1 item 2 item 3 comparing uh, this item with something of previous so if you notice the strawberry pop tarts were selling seven times the usual rate right? it is not what is the fact there it is not the fastest selling item it is not seventh most fastest selling item but how did they sort it out they were looking at what is the usual rate right and what is today's rate and comparing see on a usual day pop tarts sell three pieces a day or three packs a day and now we are selling 21 packs a day that means it's selling fast right so normally our thought process goes like okay it's a grocery store which is selling more which is selling less but they wanted to compare which is selling the faster because it's a hurricane time you need to stock immediately time is a crucial factor so the maths and stats guys are the people who will think about it okay uh, am i getting the fastest item or am i getting the most frequent item or am i getting the most profitable item right in a very simple use case this is a probably very simple use case by the way in a simple use case itself we have a different knowledge coming out but what is the end outcome to maintain the stock of the required items to minimize customer dissatisfaction right so this is a pure data based decision making this involves at least one uh, two people i can say but in real life uh, for example just expand this problem to let's say uh do a proof of concept or uh, get the insights from the sales during hurricane francis i mean hurricane time uh, the cfo wants what are the major insights from the sales then it will be two people so first guy there is an it guy who manages all the it infrastructure he has to give you the access to database so from the database you get all the uh, stores which are on the florida coast and uh, all the data which is related to it the it guy picks it up and the domain knowledge business guy, guy will give you in uh, inputs saying hey i'll be more interested in this i'll be more interested in this the maths and stats guys go and write the code query 
to get the insights from it, probably visualize and show to the business guy. Right. So this is the scope of a data based project. Now, while this is one example, uh, I can go on giving more and more examples. In fact, you can suggest me or read it for yourself here. Right. So the make my trip uh, increasing flight prices after Mumbai airport shutdown or Boeing outage. Uh, Oyo predicts the marriage seasons uh, even without astrologers' help uh, because whenever there is an, a marriage season, uh, right, probably uh, three months after some time, and everyone starts booking the hotels or uh, function halls in those areas, right? Uber knows when it rains better than our met department. In fact, yeah, as soon as the first second rain drops, right? everyone will uh, start to open Uber app and we will see a search there. So in fact, <laughs> Uber knows it better, Zomato knows it better, whether it's raining or not, right? Google keyboard lets you complete, autocomplete, good morning, right? I know most of you don't like to send some messages like that, but yeah, Google keyboard will help you. 1mg.com starts recommending your next medicine, right? When you order a medicine on cough and next week it will suggest you cold medicine. Grammarly is an app which corrects your next mistake, right? And today's world, if you see, we are so, so much reliant on our recommendation engine. Uh, probably if you use Spotify or Savan or uh, any other music app, Spotify recommends your song, Google, Google recommends your answers, YouTube recommends your next video, Zomato recommends our food, and some app recommends you went to sleep, uh, right? Uh, YouTube recommends a recipe. So there's a lot happening in AI, right? Uh, we are already consumers of AI, that I can say for sure. Now, uh, the reason why I tell you is there are two factors here. Uh, one is we are already consumers of AI. And second is, just look at it, all the major unicorns you have ever seen in India are on this list, right? So AI and database decision making uh, is increasingly taking role every day. And every company is starting to hire a data team, which has data science. Having said that, the history of AI doesn't come, go back to 2005 or 2010, right? Uh, the first machine translation experiment was done in 1960s, where Russian was converted to English. Phase detection, speech detection was available as early as 1995. Uh, uh, electrical demand forecasting, uh, where we forecast the load, how much a city will consume, was deployed as early as 1980s. And uh, predicting enemy warships and all, uh, British was estimating German tanks as early as 1940s. Uh, if you are keen, you can have a look at Manhattan Project. Uh, that is the basis for the nuclear bombs bombed on uh, Japan. Uh, was the earliest one you, to use Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, this is a simulation even today, people use it in UI or Facebook AI, a lot of places. And the only thing uh, which is brewing or which is like burning the domain, uh, you might be wondering uh, why so much? Because more and more data being generated and captured than what we did 10 years back. And more and more analysis is happening on storage side, compute side, they have become cheaper, right? Uh, uh, the costs have become half in last 10 years, right? Computational space, storage space, right? Now, people wanted to analyze this data more and more uh, to get insights and make more money out of it, right? And what drives this is either to solve some of the unsolved problems or to get better insights into to make business better, 
to reduce the human efforts or to make more efficient operations right so these are the factors which are driving the businesses into ai so any questions till here you want to ask so i broadly uh, kept the context like uh, how ai and data science is being used in today's world now we will have a deep dive into uh, how a project look like uh, though i have explained you in a brief way uh, sometime back uh, on the uber example uh, so walmart example this is how the data looks like uh, so i was referring to right if you look at the number of walmart in the us like this huge the data always looks like this right so piece wise slicing uh, the data is very important so one of the important part of the project is uh, collecting the data right uh, what data is relevant where it is available and how to retrieve it uh, if you go to a major bank like uh, icici or city bank uh, probably the data is on a very huge data they store now if you are working on a very small use case of uh, building a model whether the uh, customer will subscribe to an uh, fixed deposit based insurance plan uh, combo plan or something like that you need to identify which data you want so you have to connect to databases slice it uh, take it so that's the database the skill so as a data scientist you will be expected to know sql Uh, excel or any other internal tool which helps you in querying of course python can do us also python query the database and extract the relevant data slicing it now this next part of uh, data science project will be visualization or uh, understanding the data understanding data or it is also called a business data understanding uh, people call it as building dashboards also and uh, there is another world called as business intelligence as well all these terms come unto the simple way uh, simple task of taking the data putting it at one place and trying to visualize it and making sense out of it so all this uh, is making sense of data why do you make sense out of data the outcome will be making sense or generate an insight or uh, utilize this in modeling where you build a predictive models and all right again this will be the task of data analyst or business analyst so here we have an interesting insight from uh, a business use case where we were looking at the churn of the subscription based service where uh, you have a set of customers who have used different registration method registration method 1 uh, registration method 2 and registration method 3 and you are looking at how many of the customers who stayed back versus uh, how many of you come uh, customers left the subscription package churn means you stop to use the subscription not churn means you are still using the subscription right so if you observe keenly what you understand is in the registration method to a lot of people stayed back whereas a few people churned in registration 3 also lot of people uh, uh, the churn percentage is around 40% here it's around 20% that how do i get it 383 divided by 383 plus 
Now, if you look at the registration one method, this might be a lot of people left. The churn percentage is fifty percent. Now, what do you understand by this? That means uh, this registration method is a cause for our churn. That you can say, no. The problem is with this registration method. I mean, you might have forcibly uh, made to people made. Uh, people to register here. That's why you churn, right? See, you look at a bank website. Uh, the set of people will go online and apply for a credit card, and they will use it. But you go to a mall, and there, there is there's a guy who says, uh, uh, "If you buy this card, you will get this much discount." What will you say? You will take the card, you will swipe it, you will get the discount, and you will throw it and never use it, right? Or through compulsion, if you are doing it, you will discard that method. So that's one kind of way. Uh, see wh why the business need to understand because if you are not using the credit card of the bank, then or if you are unsubscribing to Amazon Prime or Netflix, they are losing a customer, right? So they need to understand who will join. So all this is called exploratory data analysis. We will teach you with Python as well as Tableau. And finally, coming to the machine learning or the AI aspect of it, modeling, where we will build predictive models, mathematical models, to predict the outcome of what will happen next. Or you try to classify whether I will churn or not. You try to predict a price for me. Like Uber predicts a price, make my trip changes the price and all, right? You try to cluster groups and give offers based on groups and all, right? So there are a lot of machine learning models, predictive models, uh, which kind of give a lot of insights once used. All the models you see or the examples which I have suggested you are machine learning models. And finally, selecting and training a model. Uh, training models is as easy as eating pani puri. That's the reason I use it. But building a model is as difficult as uh, making pani puri. <laughs> so that is the reason I use this classic example because in a lot of open APIs or code which you can directly use it uh, and train it. That is very much uh, easy. But the problem is, uh, you need to understand a lot of intricacies, small, small things, nitty gritties of the model so that you can better fine tune it. And finally, I show you some uh, sugarcane examples. So, this is the data uh, summer. Uh, this you guys, uh, you're doing the modeling job, you get these patterns or insights. Of course, this is not for you, this is for your CFOs or CTOs who take decision. Uh, this is called residual. Residual analysis is nothing but uh, understanding the errors in the machine learning model and trying to get better. Have you ever seen this data scientist or even this sugarcane guy try to look at these residuals and try to extract as much patterns from it? The same thing you are doing it in real life also. Right, when you become a data scientist, this is what you will be doing. Extract as much as patterns as possible from the data. Now, uh, right, so this is a classic screenshot saying that same account, same destination. Uber shows uh, different pricing uh, for uh, different battery level. For example, he noticed this is a 45% level battery and this is 90% battery uh, and the account is the same, the payment method is the same, but if you see 45% uh, charging guy, uh, charging account got uh, the uh, bill as 24, whereas 90% guy got that as 21. Right, so uh, Uber at least uh, I think two, three years back, they were using battery charging uh, as an indicator for pricing because uh, 
if your battery level is low you will not keep on trying it again and again na so probably you had a 5% battery this guy would have shown 30 dollars 30 cents or something like that and this is a classic use case of uh, businesses using uh, data i mean for predicting uh, prices as well as changing behavior of the customers right if you look at the project life cycle i was explaining first of all you get some business understanding and then you get the data understanding then you get the data prep uh, you do modeling you iterate a lot between data preparation and modeling you iterate a lot between data understanding and business understanding right and then you finally evaluate and deploy the model and all this data lies somewhere here Uh, in your enterprise warehouse or something. So this uh, a lot of data business understanding and data understanding is done by the business analyst. Uh, a lot of data understanding prep is done done by data analyst. Uh, a lot of modeling, evaluation, and deployment is done by uh, data scientist. All this. Uh, in the hands of a manager or an architect who uh, looks at the entire project life cycle and uh, if you look at the skill set the business analyst most likely is expected to have an uh, mba or uh, some pg diploma in business analytics or something is expected to understand sql very well when you come at data understanding ux you are expected sql uh, tableau uh excel and of course python a lot all these things and when you come to data understanding sql all this above plus python plus ml deep learning and nlp these are the expected skills and of course uh with a lot of practice right uh you can read it for yourself uh, hi pradeep can you differentiate once again between the analyst and the data modeling guy okay right i'll do that give me a minute right so a uh, lot of companies do not distinguish uh, between data analyst and the data scientist but uh, the companies where they have separate roles the data analyst is the guy who does more of monotonous job of uh, cleaning the data preparing preparation of the data for example he might be querying different databases uh, merging different data at one place uh, checking uh, whether there are any duplicates or data consistencies data cleaning aspect of it that is predominantly a data analyst job when you come to a data scientist job most of the time the expectation is that a clean input of data is present with him and he is more focused on uh, trying different models uh, different techniques in modeling and then uh, different techniques in evaluation and uh, probably deploying and looking at latency such things so a data scientist is more into modeling a data analyst is more into cleaning and querying the data but having said that lot of companies do not distinguish most of the times you are you are expected to do the both if you are to going into smaller companies but uh, enterprise level companies do maintain uh, the difference it depends upon the scale of the project also i hope it's clear harin so i always urge people to understand how this machine learning and ai is done so so that because we are too to getting dependent on recommendation engines uh, which cleverly manipulate our behavior so most likely we don't end up enjoying and optimizing our happiness 
uh, we might be enjoying uh, i mean we we might be depending on them and then making more money for them rather than for us so you probably might have noticed you might have gone on logged on to youtube to watch something and uh, have one hour later uh, you are on a completely different video you might not be expecting the same is happening uh, over the food also you wanted to try something out open the app but you end up ordering a different thing and you never realize it as well so uh, finally what my see is like uh, the ai and data world is already manipulating us you are already a consumer of data science uh, so i would say we should be fighting back i mean we should be understanding how our we are being influenced also uh, especially with the social media and ai right i don't know how many of you watched there is a uh, good uh, a series on uh, it's not a series it's a documentary i would say the social dilemma on netflix a lot of books have appeared on the internet effect as well as ai effect on human beings uh, but this is the first of uh, videos i could say the documentary is very good there on netflix probably you might have to look at it of course uh, it's only relevant uh, as long as you are talking about consumer of a data science Uh, but if you're talking about your career, making a career on it, uh, see, uh, you don't have much influence on what Google designs, right? All you need is a job, interesting work, right? Uh, probably on that side, it is a good thing, right? So, what makes you a data scientist? Uh, so, I broadly classify this into three things: skills, concepts, and tools. so analytical thinking business acumen problem solving these are the skills you need to acquire this can be acquired with a lot of practice and uh, as a part of our curriculum we do a uh, lot of uh, give assignments and uh, through the teaching we inculcate that skills for you when you talk about concepts these are available everywhere and anywhere but nevertheless we teach you all the concept in a coherent way Uh, easily understandable analysis, uh, stats, machine learning, and LP deep learning, and all. and finally tools. When you go to uh, hands-on part, we'll discuss how to use Python, Tableau, Excel, SQL, Git, Linux. These are some of the tools. Uh, while we give inter, we the course is extensively built on Python, which is 80 percent used in the market today. But we will introduce Tableau and SQL as well. Uh, and of course i always say invisible things make the yeah prithvi one doubt one doubt yeah, yeah. on the tell you one yeah what about that r r so we have a self paced recordings given in r uh, we are not teaching the course in r at the moment because uh, we teach everything in python at the moment no but having said that see the differences between r and python especially on the syntax part are very less see if you are good with one skill then you can uh, probably acquire the other one very easily uh, good with r acquire python easily good with python acquire r easily but the reason we adopted python completely is because today 85% of the industry is in python and uh, if you look at the concepts like nlp deep learning these are uh, the state of art models the latest models are in python itself and an increasing number of companies are okay if the data science being implemented in python or r so that is the reason we have to choose the curriculum uh, python as main thing no, no sir thank you right excuse me sir yeah yeah so will you teach us python along with the course yes 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 hemu yes okay sir. the enter thing the, i mean if you look at it, just give me one moment but we will i'll tell you uh, the entire 40 hours of uh, hands on part is completely in python only 
So, uh, okay. yeah, I'll introduce the course now, end-to-end -end data science uh, from supervised learning. So if you look at the curriculum, this goes to four to 4.5 months around. Sometimes it takes five months also. We start with descriptive stats and inferential stats. This will be mostly foundation. And then we go to statistical modeling, machine learning, which is like AI and data science part of. And advanced AI is nothing but NLP, optimization and deep learning, right? So the all these things, but by the way, whenever we learn the concepts, these are implemented in Python. Hands-on part will be there also. All this have to be implemented in Python. So the classes will be like two and a half hours uh, each day. So one to 1.5 hour, I'll be teaching concepts and then rest one hour will be teaching hands-on. Uh, all the tutorials are already given to you on the course module and you will be able to the, see the code and while we execute along with you, you can also execute with us. So they are not self-paced, it's completely live. If you have any doubt, you can ask us also. And we are also planning after this two and a half hours, additional uh, 30 minutes of session where uh, a freewheeling session kind where you can sit down, you can practice, will be there only to answer your doubts. That will be completely optional uh, for the people who are requiring more help in the hands-on part. And during the day, uh, this is weekend's plan. Uh, and during the weekdays, anytime you get time, you want to prepare, then we are, we will be able to prepare. Uh, and you will be able to ask questions via Slack channel. You can, we are always available on Slack channel. You can just ping any of the mentor or put the questions in the group. So it goes like this, you have some pre-class preparation, uh, like looking into previous class, looking into notes, live classes. In the classes, you can interrupt me just like you're doing now. You can ask questions, doubts. Uh, if you are not comfortable, you can type in chat as well. And then after every module, we have quizzes to check your concepts. And coding part, you have a uh, teaching part and coding part. Again, instructor-led demo. So uh, we have, uh, I myself come online and teach the tutorials. We have another person also, another mentor who will help me during the mentoring time. Oh, sorry, uh, during the coding time. So two mentors will be available online uh, during the coding sessions. So that there will be much help. And there will be takeaway assignments after the hands-on is done in the class. We upload assignments and you are expected to solve the assignments. And I can assure you our assignments are good enough. 90% of the people who completed the assignments made a data science transition. And while solving the assignments, if you have any doubts, we are always available on the Slack channel. And finally, you have some tasks to ev for evaluation purposes. Now, a detailed curriculum sheet will also be given, uh, but for now I can say descriptive stats, inferential, Python will start with basic, teach pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and then we'll go to linear and logistic regression, time series, machine learning, advanced machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing. And we have some topics like minor topics, cloud, SPL, R, and Tableau. R is self-paced. Tableau is live for eight hours around, SQL is around the four hours and cloud also. Cloud, that means related to data science will have a two hour session. So this is the end-to-end -end data science curriculum, a total of 85 hours to 90 hours of uh, 90 hours of live teaching is that's what included. Now, after this live teaching part, we have something called as mentoring. So at the end of the course, we are, you're not thrown out of the class, but still we have an engaged way, right? Because there's a lot of information all load and how to build your profile, how to get the initial experience, depth versus breadth issue. There are a lot of issues you face even after uh, the course completion. So we are, the Slack channel is open. We also give you 25 solved industry use cases. Uh, the code is given, 
the data is given and uh, the recorded explanation is also given you can take any of those problems understand them and try to solve them in your own way or you can also solve uh, pick up any other problem and solve it in your own way after this five months uh, the path is independent of each other so you can always choose any project and complete the project after five months so you have five months time when we teach you concepts then there is another three months of mentoring time during which you can complete a project complete a project so with regards to project we don't put any restrictions as such there are a lot of projects which we upload ourselves uh, problem statements if you like them you can pick them if you don't like them you have anything in your mind you can always come back to us and i we will help you and uh, weekly we can touch up on and you can work together and uh, will complete a project and that code you can upload on your github and you can showcase it when you go to the interview so the capstone uh, preparation uh, looks something like this so we have something called as basic data tales uh, you can have a look at those data tales you can solve quizzes in the middle of data tales have a look at advanced data tales also data tail is nothing but a data solved use case uh, the reason we do a lot of solved use cases is that because uh, assimilating the concepts and relating it to the problems is difficult that's why we solve some things and give it to you so that you can have a look at it and you are better uh, equipped to perform during the capstone you can choose a project statement collect the data processing modeling and submission and will help you build your git profile social presence uh, in case you are applying for any job cover letter or visual cv we don't prepare it for you but if you prepare we'll review it and give suggestions mock interviews and post interview analysis all this is one on one based and only on request you will it will be provided to you now communication after class you have a doubt session if needed we can schedule one in middle of the week a slack channel is given access all communications will happen there uh, there will be a discussion forum for you for posting coding doubts also and you can email for platform also so we have concepts quizzes take away assignments we do class engagement also capstone performance and uh, yeah finally i'll talk about why only supervised learning uh, we you have two weeks no questions ask a refund and you can also shift to next batch free of cost we understand that a lot of people will have some Uh, issues during the batch uh, work gets increased or you might be relocating right we offer shifting to next batch free of cost we also have advanced courses i prepare the content and i deliver the content and we have availability of mentors all the time for consulting opportunities we prefer our students and we also refer to multiple opportunities we don't guarantee placements but uh, most of the times monthly we share 6 to 8 opportunities uh, through our slack community and finally we don't put a lot of ads and pass the marketing cost to our customers we are quite affordable and uh, in terms of quality also and for us we don't tie up with any educational institutes to certify our courses we give you a course completion certificate and quite recognized across the country but uh, it is your practice your uh, knowledge that will help you get a job and many of our students got a job and we hired our students as well so this is the vision okay so i think we are running out of time i said 45 minutes it's 55 minutes but yeah i'll open it for questions so that's all from my side uh, 
Yeah, uh, Prithvi, now with doubt. So my my question is like after this uh, six months or maybe seven months of uh, this training period, maybe if you need some support after that, maybe when we are going to a new company or something like that, or maybe when we are getting a new problem or a new issue, uh, always you know it is better to have somebody you know if if you can consult someone. Are you providing such kind of uh, opportunities there? Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, you can always contact me if you feel that we can be of help we are always welcome either it is a text or email or a call yes we are available for that and most of our students still do it i have students who are uh, completed in batch 2 3 contacting me for uh, any interview help and all so we are quite open for that okay, okay thank you Uh, sir like when is the next batch starting is there any like new batch or uh, okay uh, uh, okay so the new batch is starting on april 18th uh, that's sunday and the timings will be evening 5:30 to 8:30 or 6 to 8:30 i'm not sure uh, but most likely it will be evening batch uh, starting from april 18th right and uh, the cost of program is 42000 and uh, with gst it comes around 50000 uh we have an emi option no cost emi you can take a credit card if you have a credit card you can pay it in monthly installments as well. uh i think harin uh, you were asking some question uh yes yes please uh, so can you tell me some uh, regarding your notable alumni so the shift they have made so oh, okay uh, we have this on our website itself i'll get you the link probably somebody who has made shift from one domain to other so that's something i'm looking for uh domain in the sense uh, from different domain to data sciences right yeah 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 so we have all the success stories there uh, for everyone to have a look at it in case you want to talk also i can arrange an appointment with any of them so yeah uh, thanks to be for that yep yeah. uh, others also you can have a look at it supervisorlearning.com hash success stories we have a lot of other uh, transition stories there uh, in fact there are much more but uh, couldn't get some time to upload them but uh, So, any other queries? Okay. Uh, hello. Do we have to? Uh, do we have some pre-read or some pre-learning material before the classes starts? Okay. Uh, pre-read generally, yes. There is a pre-read module before the classes start. You can go through that, and uh, sometimes I give the pre-read material itself, and sometimes it will be the. previous classes notes you have to refer or some assignment and all that's it uh, most of the material to be uh, will be delivered during the class itself but it's up to you self interest you have something to read yes we will have a session wise curriculum given also right i think uh, have answered all your questions if you have anything else let me know guys uh thanks prithi thank you thank you and yeah thank you thank you prithi thank, thank you thank you sir sir thank you